A friend of mine has a Strat Project guitar here. Um, it's like an aftermarket body. Really nice bird's eye maple neck on this. Um, standard vintage style uh, bridge. But he asked if I could help him put the ground wiring and the input jack in before he puts his loaded pick guard in. If you do need help uh, wiring up your pickups, your control pots, and your switch, I have another strap video on my channel here um, that takes you through that step-by-step -step with 50 style wiring that works beautifully, sounds great, and it's really easy to follow the video. So I also have one on P-Base and a 72 thin line telly. Um, and uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be wiring up this input jack and then we're gonna be routing the ground wiring and then to the volume pot. So I'll show you guys how to finish off the, the full wiring for the guitar. And remember, this is my way of doing this. It absolutely 100% works. This is how a lot of guitar techs I'm friends with uh, do it. And it's how I've been doing it for 20 years now. So, but everyone has their own way of doing things. So if you don't like my way, um, find another. So, but hopefully this is helpful. Uh, here we go. So. These parts that we're going to be using are used, but if you have new parts, obviously the procedure is the same. One little difference though, we're going to start with the input jack here. If you're using a brand new input jack, you're not going to have any solder at all on these legs here. So you're going to have to tin them. To tin them, you just hold some heat. I'm using a, a Hako or HACO, however the hell you say it, FX888D, as in David uh, Soldering Station. It's by far my favorite one. I'll put a link in the description um, if it's still available. Um, but I've used a bunch of them, and this is my favorite. So super reliable. Um, but I'm at 850 degrees here. And to tin the legs, you just apply heat to one side, take your fresh solder, and let it run down the other side. But don't let any solder run inside that jack it's really important all right the input jack itself is real simple this here is the tab that when you push your guitar jack into this the actual cord with the with the thing on the end this here is what holds it in place that's that snap you hear when you plug it in and then it's nice and tighten there this is what is locking that in place this is grabbing around the head of that jack then you have your outer lug. You have two lugs here on this particular style of jack. You have your outer lug, which is what they call your lead or your output wire. And then you have your inner lug, the one that's closest to the center. This is gonna be your ground uh, wire. Now, when you're wiring up guitars, you don't have to use different color wires. You don't have to use uh, white and black wire. There's no such thing as ground and um, uh, you know, negative and positive wiring in this particular case. You can use the same exact color wire as long as you know what's what as you're doing the wiring. So, but in our case here for simplicity and so that you guys can easily see this, I always use black and white wiring because it's just easier once I get things inside the guitar body that I know, you know, what the hell's what. So the first thing you're gonna need is about a good 10 inches of wire we're gonna use this black piece first, and we're gonna start with the ground wire coming off the input jack. So we're gonna to wanna to heat the inner, the closest lug to the opening here. We're gonna heat the, the lug, push it through, and then we're gonna curl it up or down. It doesn't matter, but I tend to go up. Let it make a good uh, secure connection. And you really wanna check these connections. That jack gets a lot of wear and it's one of the most, I would say, impacted parts on your guitar other than obviously the bridge. Um, so as you're putting your guitar jack in and out, you don't want these to um, come loose from that friction and vibration. All right, so once you have a good connection there, the reason why we bend these up is so that there's no chance a wire can come through and potentially touch the actual guitar jack once you plug in uh, your guitar. You want a nice clean path right there. You need about the same length of your output wire. What's gonna be your output wire? Uh, this is about 10 inches long here. 
We're going to go out to in, heat it up. I think I had too much coffee. And we're going to curl it up and make that connection. Let it cool. Good. All right, so you should have two wires coming off that input jack at this point right now. And we're just going to leave this and set it aside and go over to the guitar itself. Now, this is an aftermarket guitar body, but whether it be an actual Fender, Strat, you know, an aftermarket body, it doesn't matter. There's going to be a ground screw somewhere about right here. This is where the grounding is going to end up um, being routed to. And the input jack obviously is going to go into here. And then this is where you're going to drop in your pick guard with your controls and all that. So there's usually an access hole somewhere in this area between here and in here. And in our particular case here, it actually punches. Let me see. Let me find out where this one is. I guess we're going to figure that out in a second. Because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, ground the trem claw on the back of this bridge. So here's our ground wire here. Now, he has this copper foil tape in here to insulate that uh, 60 cycle hum, your single coil hum, and it does work. It can be effective. So we have to peel back some of this here and then we'll replace it um, afterwards. But so we're going to flip this over. And you'll notice on the back of the trem claw here, he has a little, looks like a little puddle of um, old solder here. So we can use that. I'll check to make sure it works, that it's, well, it'll work, but I mean to make sure that it's still going to be able to tack the wire. But if you're using a brand new trem claw, you're going to notice that you don't have anything here, which is fine. You're just going to take your solder, heat that, and it does take a good amount of heat get your iron nice and hot and then you're just going to pull up a little puddle of solder and that's going to become your spot to to put your ground wire there so you're going to need a piece of wire that you're going to use for your ground from the trend claw here let's see i use this little piece here And all you're going to do is hold this wire down on that solder, take a little pair of needle nose pliers or something that you can hold it down with, let it cool, and let go. Perfect. Now, if you have trouble, sometimes you won't be able to get that trim claw hot. Uh, for a minute and it'll just keep beating up and it pops right off. You just have to be patient with it and get yourself a good base of solder there that you can lay that wire into and you can make sure you have a good solid connection. Now, when you run this wire back into the, through the uh, cavity, you want to make sure that you don't interfere with these springs in any way. I've seen wires kind of tangled up in there. So what we're going to do is our access hole is right here and even in these aftermarket bodies they're usually all pre-drilled so unless you have something that you built yourself completely from scratch then you would have to drill yourself um, a ground wire access hole here but in this case it's right here next to this trim claw so all we're going to do is route this wire through it Let me see if this gets caught up in here. I'm actually going to take the end off of this. I'm just using some scraps for a demonstration here. All right, so we're just going to get this in here and try to route it through. And be patient with this stuff. It can be a little bit of a, a pain. All right, so we're just going to route this down through, take a little pair of pliers to help push it the, the rest of the way. Sometimes it'll get caught on something. And in our case, we have to make sure that his copper tape. Yeah, here it is coming through right here. 
the tape was kind of in the way. So I'm going to pull this a little snugger, flip it back over, make sure that as I pull it through, it doesn't interfere with the springs and you can see that's nice and neat. All right. All right, so you can see we have way more than enough, which is fine, that's okay. We can always use the excess for something else, but you don't wanna have to, like I said, make a bunch of weird connections in there. So next thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna take the end off of this, and let's strip it. We're gonna take off about a good three quarters of an inch, maybe a half inch. Now there's a couple ways to do what I'm about to show you here. We're gonna make a loop, go around this screw. Some people will solder this straight to the screw. That's It doesn't matter as long as you're making this connection. We're just going to lay this right here, right around the screw. And then we're going to tack it down. like that and then we're going to go back to where the trim claw is for a second and just pull back a little bit of the wire to make sure that it's snug in this cavity here see i know for a fact he's going to put a humbucker in here so we want to make sure that in no way this wire interferes with this humbucker cavity here you know, it's you have very little room when you're dropping your controls and all that stuff in. So you definitely don't want some one of your ground wires to be all messy in here. So you can see this is really out of the way. Just keep it kind of pushed just like that. Now you can put a bead of solder on there to that screw if you want to. If you do decide you want to do it's not necessary by any means, but if you do want to do that, just heat that and we can just tack it like that. And like I said, I'm just doing this as a demonstration. So, all right, so you have your trim claw grounded. Nice and neat, your trim claw is grounded from the back of the trim claw over to the ground screw here. All right, the next step is we're gonna go ahead and drop in the um, the input jack. You'll notice that in the cavity there's a hole right in the side here, right over here in the side that takes it from the input jack cavity over into where your controls are. Now I've already peeled his copper insulation tape back to make sure that I can punch through there. You're going to take both of these wires And we're gonna drop them through here. Man, this access hole here is really small. They definitely want you to use very thin wire in this body. I don't know where this body's from. It looks like it's alder. Now, here's an important thing when it comes to putting this jack in. You wanna make sure that your wires do not go across once you get everything in place and drop this in, you wanna make sure that the wire doesn't come across where the this guitar jack is gonna pop in all the way up to here when you plug in your guitar. So if you have wires, especially pulled tight right here in this area, you'll find that when you push your guitar in that you can't plug it in correctly and it'll knock the wires loose and you'll have all kind of issues. So what you wanna do is tuck these backwards slightly like this let them fold a little tiny bit like that so that they're towards the back of the cavity and then drop that in like this. Now, don't take the wires at this point and pull them too snug. The whole point is to keep those wires. I'm gonna show you that one more time. This is super, super, super important. We're gonna just take the wires, push them towards the back of the cavity like this. 
and then drop them in. That keeps that entire jack path clean when you push the guitar in so that you don't hit those wires. Now at this point now, if you want to, you can go ahead and drive a screw into here to tack this down. Uh, sometimes I won't if um, I think I'm gonna go back and look at something again under there, but let's just put a screw in here to keep it from flopping around and we'll leave the other one undone. And this is what you should have now. You should have your ground and your lead wire popping through like this, ready to go. And this is gonna end up getting wired to your volume pot. So I'm just gonna take, uh, let's take this junk pick guard. So this is just a, a pick guard that I use just to test things, test pickups, things like that. So we're just gonna do this as a demonstration. Uh, one of the, the, the lugs on, uh, the connection lugs on this first pot is even loose because I do demonstrations with it. So, okay, so what we're gonna do here, there's two ways that you can finish this off. We're just gonna strip off a little piece of the lead wire and a little piece of the ground wire. Now your, your guitar's grounding is not actually complete yet. There's one more step that you have to check, but usually this part will be done on your guitar already. Like let's just say right now you were using this video to help you just uh, put in a new input jack because something was wrong with the jack or I don't know, you just want to swap with a different brand or whatever. The rest of what I'm showing you here is gonna already be done and all you're gonna do is end up um, hooking these wires up. But the last part of the guitar's grounding is actually gonna be here. The pots themselves here, your volume pot in the case of this setup here, and remember there's like a million different ways to set up a strat when it comes to um, how the pickups are wired and whether it's push-pull, it's whether it's a humbucker. I mean, there, there's so many different ways, but this is a standard three coil, uh, three single coil uh, SSS Strat. There's one volume, two tone. It's just, a, it's as basic as it gets, like 50 style. But here's what happens. Your white wire is now gonna come in and this is the volume pot right here, the one closest to the bridge. This is gonna get soldered right to this middle attachment point here, right here, not touching the top of the pot. The ground wire, the black wire in our case, here I'm just gonna tack this as a demonstration here. This might have old solder on it, so let's see if we can't just tack it. If not, it doesn't matter. I'm just showing you this as an example. The next wire here, you're gonna make sure that you strip off. We're gonna strip off a little more than we need. So we're gonna strip off about a full inch because the first way to do this is like I'm about to show you. You're gonna run it through this connection tab here and then up on top the pot like this. It's gonna get soldered in two places, the top of the volume pot, and then also to this connection tab here so that those two are making contact via your black wire. The white wire in the, on the middle connection leg here is only gonna be attached and soldered just to the connection leg, not the pot. That's the first way to do it. The second way to do it that I've seen people do is where they actually will take this connection tab, bend it all the way over, solder it to the top of the volume pot so it's fixed there permanently, and then just solder the black ground wire to the top of the pot like you would your, your pickup grounds. That's the second way to do it. It doesn't matter. You're making the same connection, just doing it differently. Now, which way do I do it? I do it the first way so that I'm not um, 
permanently soldering this leg just in case I want to use this pop for something else. I don't have this leg bent and soldered here. Plus when you bend it over that far, it does weaken the leg a little bit, my opinion. So, but I've seen it done that way a million times. Now, the third thing you can do, there's one more way actually. You can, if you've ever purchased a loaded pick guard, you'll see that usually when they come, they come ready to drop into the guitar and hook to your input jack wires, okay? And you know, a lot of people like to think of the input jack wires as like the main plug to the guitar, bringing power to the guitar, and it is, basically. So the third way though, you'll notice if you've, like I said, if you've ever purchased a loaded pick guard, is that there's gonna be a set of wires already soldered to that volume pot, like I'm about to show you here. You do want to make sure if you do the way that I showed you first where the wire comes through this leg up onto the top of the pot that you don't have the wire shielding keeping it from making connection on this tab. Make sure that you are definitely soldering the wire itself right here to that tab point there. I'm going to put one more wire on here as a demonstration to show you what I'm talking about here. So again, like I used to buy loaded pick guards every now and then if I wanted to try new pickups, but also wanted the rest of the parts, like I wanted the pots and stuff like that. And in some cases, buying the whole setup was not much more than buying just the pickups. So I'm just gonna tack this wire in here. And again, I'm just doing this really quick and dirty. All right, so you'll notice that when you buy a loaded pick guard, or you can do your own setup this way, it'll come with these, um, the ground and your output wire kind of rolled up like this, so that when you unbox this, all you have to do is take your existing input jack wires, you undo their wires that they've already given you, and then you make your connection via this set of wires like this. So a lot of times if I do a loaded pick guard for a friend or they, they'll um, send me like their pickups, the switch and all the parts and say, can you assemble this for me? I'll send it back to them with these wires rolled up a new set of wires on here so that all they have to do is drop it in but they don't have to mess with um they don't have to mess with this pot at all and wiring to the top of the pot and all that stuff it just makes it easier that's why they sell loaded pick guards that way so anyway that choice is yours you can do it any of those three ways i just showed you okay the last thing is the ground wire to the pots themselves and again, the reason why I didn't show you how to wire this is because in most cases, this is already going to be done on your guitar. Um, you know, this was more about, about the rest of the wiring in a guitar, but there is a wire. You have to ground these three pots together and that's going to complete your entire ground system. And you could do it one of two ways. You can take a single piece of wire and go from here to the side of this pot, from the side of the volume pot to here, and then another one from here to here, or the way I prefer to do it, it looks like he's already done two pieces of wire here. It's not pretty, but it's there. I use this pick card now for test, but it's actually the same guy I'm doing this guitar for. It's a friend of mine and we swap a bunch of stuff. So um, I like to take a single wire, uh, strip out the center of it, and then solder all three places and that way these three pots are soldered together. 
So if you, for some reason, don't have that part done, you do need to do that. If you guys have any questions, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do the absolute best I can to get back to you. Um, uh, you guys can definitely do this for yourself and I hope it was helpful. And I got a couple new videos coming out after this one on biasing uh, your Fender Twin, which there's not a lot of info for. And I'm doing a P90 installation and a Gibson wiring one. So there's all kind of cool stuff coming out. I'd, um, I've had some time lately to get back into this. So uh, rock on guys.